Good morning. This week we are returning to Psalm 119. Back in March we looked at the first 40 verses and this week we'll tackle a similar section up to verse 88. Where do we find true freedom? It's not where the world says it is, in money, relationships, material things or power. These things are not secure and they don't actually set us free. In fact, they can enslave us. Turn with me to Psalm 119 and verse 41. May your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I have put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law for ever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statutes before kings and will not be put to shame, for I delight in your commands because I love them. I reach out for your commands which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. The writer says confidently, I will walk about in freedom, but why and how? Where he finds freedom is the opposite of what the world would think. He finds it in God's precepts, his statutes, his commands. We think of rules and laws as restricting, but they're there to protect us and help us live safely and get the best out of things. Now, if I was a referee in a football game, it would be a disaster. Not only do I not understand the offside rule, I don't know the rules at all. So the game would be chaos. Do you think the players would have more fun and a better game with me refereeing so that they could get away with anything they wanted or with someone who knew what they were doing? We recently adopted a rescue dog. He's learning that he'll have more fun and more freedom if he obeys the rules. If he learns to come when he's called, he'll be allowed off the lead more often. If he learns not to chew things, he'll be allowed in more rooms on his own and out of sight. It's the same with life. We need to know the boundaries and then within them, we're free to enjoy life to the full and to know God's blessing. And the way that we know the boundaries is through God's word and by the work of his spirit in us. We need to invest time in his word and get it into our system so that we know those boundaries well. We need to listen to the prompting of his Holy Spirit. The writer here pledges his trust in God's word in verse 42, makes a plea that he can always keep hold of it because his hope is in it in verse 43, delights in it in verse 47, strives for it and reflects on it in verse 48, and promises to obey it in verse 44. When Jesus came to earth hundreds of years after this psalm was written, he said, I have come that you may have life in all its fullness. That is what God wants for us, the best of life, not only here and now, but through eternity. The way that we get that is by trusting in him. We need God's word and his law, but not to follow blindly or out of duty. Instead, it enables us to find and live out a relationship with him through Jesus. When we place our trust in Jesus, he gives us his Holy Spirit, who not only guides us and helps us to understand God's word, but also gives us a new heart to enable us to love him and to follow his commands. True freedom is in Jesus. Let's not look for it in the things of this world or in selfish desires. Let's place our trust in him and invite the work of God's spirit in us to enable us to understand and equip us to follow his word, to change our hearts, to follow him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that this day, this week, and each week, we may grow in knowing you better through your word, that we may be equipped to live for you, and that through your Son, Jesus Christ, we may know true freedom. In Jesus' name, Amen.